Good morning. Wow, I'm happy to see you all this morning. This is where the winners come together, y'all. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Good morning, Coach Craig. I love seeing your face, brother. Hey, Raymond. Hey, Michael. Glad to see you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Guys, I'm fired up this morning, and I just thought we would start this morning with a 30-second, just kind of allow everybody to get in here. Um, type in the chat, uh, do, what What do you guys do for Christmas? Do you start today? Do you start tomorrow? Do you start on Monday? What are your guys' plans? When do you start? Drop it in the chat. Let's go ahead and get this started this morning. All right, y'all, let's do this. I love this. This is going to set the tone for the rest of the day. 90 plus percent of winning in anything you try to do in America today, you got to be excited. People in America won't follow or believe in a negative, dull, disillusioned, frustrated, dadgum crybaby. People want people that are positive and excited and enthusiastic and tough. The greatest, listen, the greatest definition I ever heard. I thought about this 10 million times when I wanted to quit along the way of a winner. This guy said almost everybody in America can stay excited for two or three months. A few people can stay excited for two or three years. But a winner will stay excited for 30 years or ever how long it takes to win. See, if you want to win, folks, you got to you got to stand up and you got to say, I'm so sick and tired of being average and ordinary. I'm so sick and tired of telling myself and telling my wife and telling my mama and telling everybody I'm going to win. I found it this time. Watch my smoke. See, folks, if you're going to win, you going to change. The only way you can change. Y'all, I just got to tell you, <laughs> can I be honest with everybody in here? Do I have permission to be honest with everybody in here real quick? I just want to yes. know. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, y'all. When you hear Art Williams say that, I said, I'm the dadgum crybaby. I'm being the dadgum crybaby. Tell us what's going on, right? It's something, I don't know. It's like around the, I, you know what I'm saying? Is anybody else have those moments where you're like, I'm in the crybaby, right? Like, I'm my spirit's not full the way that it was. I'm tired, right? Like you you feel it for a moment, guys. And so what I want what I wanted to do today was was to just be honest and just be a student and just be real that some of us might feel that way and some of us are like I'm so fired up right now, right? Like I know the changes inside of me, right? I I just want to tune in real quick and see where different people are right now. Are you like, man, I, I I'm kind of like Aaron. I'm kind of being a little bit of the crybaby, right? And some of you might be like, I'm tell us like I'm bulletproof. What are you talking about right now? Like I'm mentally tough. I'm physically tough. I'm spiritually tough, right? Is anybody falling anywhere in there? One side or the other, you can type it in the chat. You might be feeling unstoppable right now. But what I wanted to do today was have us come together. I want this to be really interactive. I want this to be very action oriented today. What I wanted to do today was to get the plan on paper, to get all of us, like, get the plan on paper. We need a vision, right? You know, they talk about when, the, you know, when you lose vision, you start to lose what's on the inside of you. And today we're going to get really crystal clear about that. Okay. So uh, I don't know if anybody, did anybody else go like, yeah, I'm the dadgum crybaby. Or if you're not the dadgum crybaby, have y'all ever noticed there's a lot of crybabies out there? <laughs> I'm being a crybaby. What'd you say? I don't know about anybody else, but I but I've been a crybaby this year. So you've been a crybaby this year. Crybaby. Thanks for not leaving me in here. I feel like I've been a crybaby. And I'm like, man, you know, like uh like this isn't this isn't like me. Oh like 2023 might have been the best year ever for some people. And for some people, you might go, dang, like I got my I got my I got my lights knocked out, right? And so guys, let's not stay there, right? There's a reason that we're all on here this morning and we're not going to stay there. And so I loved this. How many people saw Asad Faraj's 2024 vision casting from LFIC? Did anybody see that? Yes. Incredible. It was incredible. Why do you think it was so incredible? Like, what do you like about it, coach? What I personally enjoyed about it is how very specific he is with regards to, to the way you need to approach this year specific um, that yes. right there i love that you just said that that is exactly what we're going to do today 
So I'm going to just kind of give everybody the what and the and the why to start off here. And then we're going to be really hands on. So everybody make sure when I show you these these three slides, I'm going to drop in the chat something that each one of us can take. OK, so um, his slides were unbelievable. But I wanted to share this because this is going to kind of kick off some of the visuals of how we announced training this morning. And I would encourage everybody take a screenshot of this. We'll drop the slides at the end. But take a screenshot of this um, because I think it's really valuable because people will ask the question like, you know, I'm going to take action when I leave this training. This training's not entertainment. This training's action oriented. So when I leave, I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel, right? So, so tell us, look, here's the deal, right? If you got a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's to you and your family, and someone's reaching out to you, right, that you've built a relationship with, and they say, you know what, we have a remote financial checkup tool. Now you've been a client of ours, let's just say a couple years, right? And we have this exclusively for our families and our clients. And in less than five minutes, it'll identify a handful of ways to improve our finances, right? Guys, I am not steering towards be dollar smart. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm not trying to be scripted. What I'm trying to do very simply is give everybody something simple that all of us can see and agree and go, I can do that, right? Right? Some people like you feel like you've been a crybaby this year and you got to, we got to get out of that, right? We got to have what's right in front of us, how to use the tools in front of us. And we got to disrupt the thinking that we don't have right in our hands exactly what we need, right? Maybe we can quickly fill in some gaps that we may have missed the first time around. When do you have 20 minutes today or tomorrow for a quick visit, right? So this is simple. The point is it's simple. Just take a screenshot of it. We don't need to get too like stuck in this. But what I want to share is the screen's going to look big, but I want you guys to see why, right? So the first thing that pops up here is I was watching some people. Um, some other teammates in Primerica, right? And they said that they have four IBAs. This was from yesterday. How many people are in the mode right now of just kind of chilling, like really just chilling or really frantic, but you're trying to chill? <laughs> so four IBAs done, three policy increases. So $1,700 in additional premium, a child writer conversion, um, five Roth IRAs, right? Um, that's... That's big. One Vivint install for a Christmas gift. Four new rollovers. It was an additional $187,000 done yesterday. Who here feels like you would have felt really accomplished if this is the impact that you had made with your clients yesterday? Maybe you did more than this. Maybe you didn't do more than this. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm with you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So then... Another teammate said, I did four policies yesterday. I want to challenge people's thinking right now. It's the holidays. People are hunkering down, right? People don't want to meet. They're really busy. Not my pool of people. My pool of people don't want to come together, right? Like whatever it is that people might be thinking, they did four policies yesterday, two more increases, two PLPPs. Um, I have no idea what a new rescue is, but I'm thinking it might be a Roth or something. <laughs> Yeah. It's an RBA. Oh, We're rescuing them instead of recruiting them. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks, Robin. That's a rescue. That's fantastic. I love that. So four policy reinstatements, two Bright House Shields, $110,000 of an exchange there, seven new packs. How many Ooh. people just feel like you just be on fire? Feel like I've been a crybaby. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to shift it, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to get really specific with it. 30, how many does that say? I don't know why my my thing's not, I can't see my mouse. 32. 32. Okay. Tell us, I think you raised your hand. If anybody needs to say anything, say like, go for it. I My mouse isn't working. <laughs> so do your thing. <laughs> Tell us, did you mean to raise your hand? No, that was just me responding to your question. Just praise it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're so awesome. <laughs> um, so, so I think this is incredible. This is just yesterday, right? One of my old recruits that never took their state exam, never finished a licensing course or finished a licensing course, never took the test, but set up an investment for next week, won a million dollars from a scratch off ticket. But it's the last mm -hmm. line that I want 
to resonate with each of us. When we're ready, it will appear, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to stop getting ready to get ready to get ready. Who reacted way too much? Type it in the chat. If you reacted way too much in 2023, it's like, People will leave all of it. I'm going to X out of this so that I can let the people in the room. And then I'm going to have, uh, hey, Mike. Yeah, you can make me a co-host. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Make co-host. All right, there you go. So my hands aren't working anymore. We're going to do the thing. If you reacted way too much, right? So we're going to we're gonna skip through this really quickly, y'all. So all of this is good, great, grand, Right. But what's the number one problem? What's the number one problem when we leave when we leave training, when we leave a Zoom, when our coach calls a play? What's the number one problem you guys think that you face when you go out there? You you forget it or you sit on it. That could be, yeah. Yeah. Don't do anything. What'd you say? Don't do anything. They just yeah, they're kind of entertained by it and they know they should do it, but don't take action. Right. I think uh, distractions also. Right. Right. It kind of like it's kind of like deep down inside of every one of us a little bit. Our biggest problem is this. Our biggest problem is that. <laughs> our biggest problem and our biggest blessing is what did you say? Scrooge. Mm -hmm. uh, People. <laughs> Well, you see, I left this training. I'm really fired up. And then I met with this and this threw that off. And this yep. made me huddle up in a ball, right? This got me down in the fetal position, right? Like, aren't all people just supposed to be good, pure hearted, amazing people? Aren't I supposed to meet people? I heard something. If you guys will write this down, hungry people hurt people. Ooh. And I challenge us in the spirit of where we're going with training today is hungry people hurt people. Have y'all ever had somebody who said something that just like took your breath away or the recruit after the recruit, after the recruit, after the recruit, or the, the, the client after the client, after the client, after the client, or the person after mm -hmm. the person, after the person, and your spirit just starts getting drained and you go, but I'm a good person. And I'm doing it for the right reasons. And I'm doing it because this is what I've been asked to do. And I'm, I heard this yesterday, pray before you, before you slay. And okay. so much of us get tired because we're trying to slay the day. We're trying to, we're trying to defeat. We're trying to overcome. We're trying to break through. We're trying to do all the things. We're trying to slay the day, dominate, crush it, all the things. And we're trying to slay before we pray. And for those of you that are like, but I'm not a big prayer. Okay. I don't know how that's working out for you. Uh, but it doesn't work out well for me. <laughs> so, so if my point to all to be, of this, it's, it's, what, it's like, what'd you brain, say? it's like air. It's like air in the morning, Aaron. Okay. Morning prayer is, is like air. You just Amen, gotta have coach. it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Like I'll tell you right now, if you, uh, I've used this example before, when we leave, when we leave training, if you had a bird's eye view of TELUS, or if you had the bird's eye view of, 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 of Jim, and you just see him like, just punch in the air, you know, like, you're like, mm, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of losing his mind over there. He's just fighting. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> you just think that this is pump up jam. This is us when we leave training and we're like, I'm going to go conquer the day. And man, like mean people, sue happy people, people who say things that you're like, what just came out of your mouth? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get too on this topic, but this right here is like, people are messy. This is messy, right? It's messy. And so what happens is we spend all 2023, I had plans, but then there were people involved and it didn't really go according to my plan, right? I had a plan and they just like, they really just, well, I was so drained that I just stopped running. And if that resonates with anybody on here, like, like drop a fire emoji if I'm talking specifically to you, because we're, we can't take 
all of our goals and dreams, our purpose, the goodness that's inside of each one of you and in each one of us. We we have such nice people in Primerica. Have y'all noticed the rest of the world doesn't function like that? Yep. And I'm pretty sure like Art Williams and like the, the like the like the legends and the champions and the most incredible people that like like really grew this business. They knew they were at war. They knew they were going to have people say really nasty, hateful things. And like they didn't back down. And why do you guys think that they didn't back down? And each one of us are capable of it, too, together. But why do you think they didn't back down? Coach Wayne, Coach Tellus, Coach Craig, Coach Jim, like why why didn't they back down? It's I think it's the cause. It's the something up uh, bigger than ourselves. That's right. I mean, if you cut open the heart of a man or woman in Pride America, and there's a ton outside of Pride America, but I think really comes down to do you really think it's all about you? Really, it's about change. It's about making that difference. And I think when you come up with a cause, something beyond that, and that's what art, I think, really did is, you, you know this, Jim, they kind of massaged the heart. They just knew uh, that this is bigger than ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and it just rallied around that, man. I want right. to be somebody. As weird as that sounds, we've heard that over and over and over and over again, but Bottom line is that it gives you it gives you bulletproof for what we're looking here on the screen, the Scrooges and and all the weirdness out there. To me, it's like, you know, that's just a learning experience. The cause is is the movement. I, that's for me personally. That's what gets me up in the morning. Might be different for someone else. But I think if you come here, sorry to get on tangent. If it's all about the money, uh, you're going to have some problems because Primary don't work like that. Okay, it's like nothing, and all of a sudden, boom. So it you got to have something bigger than that. Okay, that's just my personal opinion. That's awesome. Does I'll anybody else say anything? What what Wayne said there is like, yeah, absolutely. It's like the reason that people get up and get after it, and some of the people don't. Man, they they have a why that's unbelievable. You know, they just for. For so many of us, what Wayne was just talking about, you know, we want to be somebody. Yeah, I'm just so sick of being average. Just makes you vomit, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like you want to do something different. You want to live a life like Wayne Olson lives today, you know? And it's like you want to be free just, but, you know, oh, so frustrating sometimes when you can't get there as fast as you want to. But the ones that win long term are the ones that say, man, keep remembering why you're doing this. Maybe you want to retire your mom or or, or drive a red pickup. Hell, I don't care. It's just a matter if you have a why that's big enough and bad enough, you'll ignore the pansy crybabies and go get after it and find the ones right. that are winners. That's right. That's right. And and so 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 I want to go back to this. I want to go back to this really quickly to have everybody write it down to just remember that hungry, hungry people hurt people. Hungry people, meaning they're spiritually deprived, right? Like they're they they haven't ever truly felt, they haven't truly felt or seen the hope that many of us have seen, right? They haven't had they haven't had a coach in their life that gives them grace right? They haven't experienced these things before. They hurt people and hurt. Pe We've always heard hurt people, hurt people, hungry people, hurt people. When somebody is starved enough, you guys know this, like that literally like a wild animal will do whatever it takes because they are hungry. And that is not on a physical, like that's a, on a spiritual realm of things. Right. And if anybody wants to say anything to that, please do. Um, but what I want to do is there were three things that I heard Andy Frisella say recently, and I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but we have to know as nice and kind and as much as we want to be like, we, we, we choose to be the bigger person and we choose to do the right thing all the time, no matter what the situation is. Like sometimes we got to know how to throw something into another gear. So when you have negative energy, right? Uh, when you have people around you that are acting in a certain type of way, I just encourage you to pause for a second 
um, pause for as many seconds as you need and just remind yourself that hungry people hurt people and that you're going to do so, you're going to be a part of the positive change. But number one is today we're going to get really specific. We're going to get really specific. I think that is something that I have a I had a hard time with for a long time is, of course, there's somebody inside of me that wants to do something great. And when somebody just kicks you right in the stomach and you're just like, what? What if that that continues to happen? How do how does somebody here get themselves out of that cycle? Right. Well, one, just as they said, is you got to know what your mission is. You got to you got to know that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that, you know what you're standing up for, no matter what unapologetic doesn't matter. You could have an entire jury of people like against you and it doesn't matter the people against you. It's who's walking in the room with you, right? And like, what are you standing for? You got to know your mission and you got to get very crystal clear on like what that mission is. There's so many people that are so distracted trying to get this business going and this business going and this one going and this one going and doing a trillion things. And they're mission starved people. Like, what is it that you stand up for? That's got to be the number one. Like when you get hit with something hard, like what is the mission that you stand for? Right. Two, like who, who are you? I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking this question out of spite. I'm not asking this question out of an unhealed heart, but you realize like, tell us when you go in to the gym or you're going to over, you're going to, you're going to hit a new personal record. Like there's somebody you're proving something to. Would, would, would that be a fair statement? Like, I don't know if it's beating you yesterday. I don't know if it's beating the distractions in your life. I don't know if it's somebody who said something to you want like, but you walk in there and you definitely don't just like go about it. Right. Like you're going against some massive resistance. Is that right? Are you step two? You're proving something. Absolutely. So I'm curious because you are a very, very enlightened, like, like a, a spiritually strong person. Like what, who are you or what are you proving in that? So we, we talking specifically regarding fitness, right, Jim? Yeah. Let's just use that example because, because I think when, when everybody's getting very specific today, I think it's kind of hard to just be like, I'm just proving this because I want to look good on the beach, right? I'm just doing this because I want to prove to my neighbor, like I've got the cool car. Like there's something deeper, like you're proving something. What is that? Well, oftentimes, well, I've had multiple um, reasons as far as the things that have driven me over, over the years from a proving standpoint. Some of it has to do with reliving old high school sports stuff, you know, saying that you still... You still got it. You see if you still can do certain things gym wise, um, you know, so that's being as far as when you talk about going for crazy weight, that kind of stuff still kind of pushes you still trying to feel like you're young, you know, being in your 40s, you still want to kind of prove a point to yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, but then really one of the things that drives me specifically regarding fitness, though, is more of a health thing for me. You know, I have a, uh, you know, both of my parents um, dealt with uh, my father had quadruple bypass heart surgery. My mom mm. suffered a major stroke, um, both of them diabetics, you know, so it's just kind of one of those things of if I don't want to repeat, you know, the same health challenges, you know, tell us you got to make some changes. You, know, you can't, you know, repeat the same thing, but expect to get different results. So, you know, mm. just trying to do my part from a, um, you know, believing God for a healthy life. But I feel like, you know, faith without works is dead. So there's a responsibility that I have, you know, to ensure um, that, I'm not asking God to do something, but my actions are kind of productive to what, what I'm requesting. Wow. So, that's I mean, it, that's that's what walks in the room with you. So do you guys think that he walks in and reacts? Do you think he walks in when he's that clear because he wrote it down? That's what I'm asking everybody to do. He wrote that down. So when he walks into the gym and the and the client gives him a call, when he walks into the gym and the teammates like, eh, you know what, I've been thinking like I'm out. When, when he walks into the gym and at any point in time, right, he's got to put himself in an environment. He has to, he has to prepare the atmosphere. 
-hmm. that you physically see and that you don't physically see, right? He is completely walking in there with a purpose like that. So he knows his mission and he knows who he's proving it to. And that's the second part of when you get an index card, because we're going to end this with an index card. When you get an index card, I challenge you guys to know exactly what you stand for. What is your mission that you stand for? In your mission, what you stand for, what each of us stand for is like when you're looking back on your life and you go, I have minutes left to live. Like, what did I tell my kids? What did I tell the world? What did I, what am I, what am I leaving? Like, why did God create me? Why was I here? And what did I give to the world? Like, there's got to be, there's got to be, there's got to be values and things that are coming through you that you absolutely stood for because you prayed before you slayed, right? And so the nasty things are gonna happen. The bills are gonna happen. The person's gonna call. The distraction's gonna happen. Whatever in the world's gonna happen. But you gotta know exactly what you stand for, what your mission is, no matter what, unapologetically. And it's gotta be clear to you. And you've gotta renew that every single day. You gotta renew your mind every single day on that. And then two, you gotta know exactly who you're proving that to, right? And that's different for each person, but I think that that's really, really important. Um, and I just want to keep going from from there. Uh, hey, the, Lauren, yeah, Lauren, yeah, yeah. I think that Jim, Jim has something to say. Oh, please. Hey, guys, I was just going to just dovetail into what you're saying there in the sense that one of the things you, you might have a great why, but maybe you struggle with distractions. And distractions could mean a lot of things, but... I'll say a couple things. One is, you know, if if you are, you know, over the holidays, um, <clears throat> you, you all of a sudden start hanging around a bunch of people that are going nowhere and they don't have goals and dreams and they want to, you know, bitch and moan and whine and complain. It's like you got to just remove yourself physically from that room and just look at it like poison. OK, and walk away and and be and, and start putting something positive in your head, start a different conversation with a different family member someplace else, but just you've got to refuse to be a part of that. Okay. That's Absolutely. really important. So you've got to yeah. control your environment in 2024. So whether it's this or a New Year's Eve party or the birthday party or an anniversary that's coming up throughout 24, you, you just got to make it completely that you own your thought process and what you're around, okay? And in taking a stand against distractions, mm. so to give you an example, when I was first starting, my family always had all kinds of big things together, cousins and all this stuff and weddings and whatever. So it's like, I said, no, for 24 months, I'm gonna work and I'm gonna get to RVP and I'm gonna be successful. I, I can't control going to all these functions all the time and getting distracted. I got to stay focused. And so that's what I did. And my family members, so you just never come to nothing, huh? Well, money's everything, huh? Whatever. But those are the same exact people today that I have plenty of money to, to send to them and take care of them and their kids and all that kind of stuff. And I just shake my head. It's like, oh, they just had no idea. They're just mentally broke. OK, and so that's right. you got it. You got to make that decision early and then stick with it. Coach, not, that's so powerful. These are the things I'm not going to do this year. And these are the things I am going to do this year. But I'm not just going to think, sit around and not get a result because eventually they these people that are naysayers, they want to see a result. And then when you have a result. I knew you could make it all the time. I mean, you, know, you were always my, my favorite nephew. Blah, 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 blah. You know, shut up. Okay. And so um, just decide when you're going to work and when you're not going to work, especially down. I used to drive myself nuts, Aaron, during the holidays because I wanted to be working. Then I, I, was, I was a disaster because I wasn't good for my family. It wasn't good for my business because right. I was torn in between. That's right. Just decide what days you're going to physically work and what days you're going to shut it off and absolutely engulf yourself and your family and your kids and the things you, your faith and whatever else you're involved with. So, gosh, 
That was, that was gold. That was everything. Coach Wayne, were you going to say anything to that? I mean, I love what he, oh. Yeah, just, just to penny back on top of that, I just, you know, I mean, obviously we're in the season right now, um, you know, and we're around family, whether it be Thanksgiving and starts from November all the way to the first of the year. And, and Jim's exactly right. Sometimes God love our family, but uh, there's always that one, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Jim, it's always that one. And, and you got to be bulletproof, man. You got to zip, yeah. zip. You got to be thick skinned. Um, it's not about downplay. They just don't understand. They're not in the same realm as you. Does that make sense? They yep. they don't understand that. Misery enjoys comfort. Uh, what happens is they try to drag you down because then reality hits them right in the face that they didn't do anything. Or I can I can speak from the male's perspective. I think what happens is they're looking at their wife going, well, why couldn't you, why, why, why are we hurting for money? Why couldn't you be like him, you know? And then the husband doesn't want to hear that. So she, he's trying to drag you down, Jim, and bring you down to his level. So that way everybody wins. Now on yep. paper, it's not winning, but in their mind, they won because they brought you down to their misery. So that mm. way, when you guys get together on this great holidays and Christmas, all you do is talk about crap, but mm. Jim's over there not talking about crap. That's why, that's why they're like, I don't like him. I don't know what it is. It must be the money thing, right? So guys, bulletproof yourself. I mean, attitude is where it changes. Money just shows up later, right, Jim? Money just shows up later. You got to right, tell us, you got, man, I prayed for my family. That's all I can do. I, all I can do is pray. Now, one thing you said, Jim, was perfect. <laughs> After you've accomplished it, they don't even remember the crap they put you through for the last 10, 15 years. They're like, oh, I've always encouraged you, Aaron. You know what? I knew you could do it. Man, it's unbelievable. Do you have any money I can get from you? <laughs> so it's like, man, it's like, oh, God, don't even get me on a tangent. You shouldn't even ask me that question because family will just tear you up. Your family, your friends, you can't let that get to you. Now, you don't be an ass, you know, sorry for my language. You, no. You just show the example of winning in a positive way. And I just smiled. That's all I did. When they were teasing me and saying, oh, you're going to go out and sell some insurance this weekend? I mean, I just had an attitude that, man, I just smiled. I said, someday, just someday, because I knew that I didn't want to lose. Does that make sense? Losing is only when you quit. We all have failure. Failure is like a battle, right? Tell us you just go out there, you might have had a challenge. But no, failure is when you throw in the tap. This right. is about winning for your family. This is about, they're not paying your bills. I mean, I could go on and on for three hours on this topic because it just, there was many, many days. We started off about whining. There's many days. I don't I can't even count how many times I wanted to quit. Yep. I wanted to quit every freaking hour with yep. Primerica. I mean, it was like, oh gosh, it's just like these people you keep having me stare at right now. I'm about, I want to choke them, right? So the, it's just, I'm sorry. I'll let it back to you, Aaron. Yeah. I've got on a team yeah. here. So you know, man. money money is relative, right? The more right. money you have, the more relatives you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, y'all, the la like so we've got a three step that we're putting on this index card, right? Because exactly what they're saying to to put a word to what coach, what what coach Jim and what coach Wayne just said was. You have to clearly define the enemy. See, the guy who's just punching the air, the woman that's punching the air that's just exhausted and so drained is the person who doesn't understand, doesn't clearly define the enemy, right? And so what I mean by that is, is like, what is the enemy? Who or what are the enemies? Is it, mm. is it? mediocrity is it is it i don't know there's something that you're just like i will not stand for a world like that i will not allow right that's what i mean in pre america there's so many nice people that people just get sucker punched all day long because we're in between the i'm going to turn the other cheek and i'm also going to get pummeled to death because i didn't clearly define what the enemy was and that's why I said hungry people hurt people. We're not going to attack people. We're not going to be nasty to people. We're not going to do. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to very clearly define what the enemy is. And the enemy in your life might be, um, you know, I don't know. It's 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 how you treat people. It's what you stand for. 
It's, it's what you don't stand for. Does that make sense to everybody? It's the discipline that you have or the discipline that you don't have. It's, it's no matter what, in all situations, in all situations, Shane Reedman always says it right. Aaron, if you can't put it on the front of the Kansas City Star and have it plastered out to the whole wide world, don't do it, right? And he just said it and it stuck. And I was like, yep. But guys, the rest of the world doesn't function like that. That's right. And what do we do when those things happen, right? And who are we going to be when those things happen? And so I just encourage with the positive flair on it or the, or the spiritual fill up from it is hungry people hurt people. And, and there's a reason that we're called to the front lines to do what we're doing. Right. And so step number three is what, or who, or what are the enemies, right? Write them down. Does that question make sense to everybody on here? Cause when we do this index card, like we got to have this stuff. Okay. So I, I'm just going to assume that all of us, and this is probably wrong. So if I'm wrong, just like say, no, 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 show it. But I'm going to assume that everybody on here, the participants on here, like truly love what we do. Do you guys love what we do as a company, as a crusade, as a mission? Um, or do I need to like remind that to anybody of like the goodness of what we do? I'm just asking because I can skip a whole section and get straight to the point. Yes. Straight to the point. Straight to Let's the point. Go. Straight to the point. Yeah. I love it. So, so we... We all believe and love what we do. So what we're going to do, step one, is we're going to do a spending plan together, right? We're going to actually do a spending plan together. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to use our trend track to really get a business plan and a plan, a personal management philosophy to end 2023 strong and go into 2024 and keep the strength throughout the year, right? And we're going to be really specific about it. And that's what I loved about what Jero just said is specific. So what I'm going to show here really fast is mm, we're going to go straight to the spending plan here really fast. I don't know. No, let me pull this up. Sorry, guys. I don't know why this goes away. <coughs> there we go. Okay. So we did this spending plan. And there's going to be a copy of this for everybody. All I'm going to ask for everybody to do is when you get this in the chat, when you get this in the chat and look, what's super cool about this is there's multimillionaires on the Zoom and there's people who are like, I've made $5 in Primerica and there's everybody in between, but it's, it's valuable for every single one of us. When you get this, all I ask is that you go to file and that you make a copy, all right? So file, make a copy. Because if our mission and if what we're gonna prove and if we have a clearly defined enemy, then one of the things that always gets people down is when you get off of an appointment or you're trying to prospect or you're trying to do something and you meet people and things don't go according to your plan and then you go back to reality and you go, and I'm frustrated I'm frustrated with my own personal stuff. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because I'm not controlling what I can control. So when I can't control people, I really get frustrated. Y'all know what I'm saying? Control what you can control. Control the growth that you can control. And I'm saying pray before you slay. But you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there is a clearly defined mission that we're all on. And the mission that most of us are on is we're not going to stand for people being in financial bondage, including yourself, including ourselves, right? So we're going to make a copy of this really quickly because I know what happens oftentimes in the Zoom world is you're like, well, nobody's paying attention to the fact that I'm driving my car, or that I'm riding a pony eating spaghetti right now. So I'll just get to this another time. Well, the problem with that is, is you never get to it another time, most of the time, right? All right. So mm -hmm. once you open up this spending plan, all we're going to do once you make a copy is I just want to show you guys around here so that you can see. But what you're going to do is you start here. Decide on the amount of cash, right? The reason for cash now for the multimillionaires, I apologize. I'm not I'm not preaching at you guys telling you what to do. But this is a really great thing for everybody who's like, you know what? I am not financially independent. I am not bulletproof. I have not taken care of my kids and grandkids yet. 
Decide on the amount of cash you want to use monthly for the things like when you travel, when you go out, like your fun stuff, you're eating out all of the things. And you got to decide now what that's going to be. Decide what the cash is. So however often you're going to pay yourself, if that's going to be weekly, biweekly, you know what I'm saying? Monthly. When you pay yourself on payday, you spouse have cash. That's it. When it's done, it's done. You got to wait till the next payday, right? Did Would you guys say that part of the problem in 2023 was when you got deposits from Primerica, you just started living like you just had more, but you didn't actually follow a plan? And so when you were reacting, when there was less, right, you go into react mode because we're not controlling what we can control. So decide the dollar amount right now that you're going to use for the out and abouts, right? And then enter below the amount of money that you're going to save monthly towards short-term goals, not emergencies. So put the dollar amount, let's say, for example, that you're going to buy a $20,000 car, but you're going to do it in two years. And right here, you're going to put $10,000, sorry, right here, because you're going to do the goal in two years. Does that make sense? And then once you click over here, it's just going to put your monthly amount in. Okay. So start filling in the things. You guys got to make a copy of it. Otherwise, we're going to see you go like, I don't know. I am Sally and Sally has this much money, right? You got to go up to file, make a copy. But you're going to put in here the things and start dreaming and start getting clear and start getting very specific. It's good. Because when we're not conscious of things, right? That's what the Oh No Money Show is all about. Is be aware and conscious. Now they're mm -hmm. conscious talking about wealth. We got to get, we've got to master the fundamentals, right? And so we have to put in here, Mike and I did this. We went through every single thing and then anything else. And we said, okay, so what are other things throughout this year that are really specific goals? And we got very crystal clear. And guess what? Add up this number. And then the next step is some expenses that are not monthly. Like, do you intend on traveling this year? Do you intend on this year being the year that you, that you say like, I got what you wanted, babe. We did it. Here it is. Here's the reality of what I promised, right? Um, this would give me great peace. This would give me great joy. Um, is it you want to have more mission trips involved in your life? Is it that you want to start some? I don't know, but you got to have, you got to have those things up here. And then you have to actually account for these things and be very real about it. The money might not be here yet. Exactly what Coach Wayne said, like it's attitude first, the money follows. So what's your attitude about these things? Do they just happen? Do we just react, right? So go in here and actually get very specific on the annual amount that you're allocating for these things. And I think one of the biggest things that people struggle with is people go, man, you got to go for this. You got to go for this. You got to go for this. You got to do a five by five. You got to do a 20 by 20. You got to pick up $2 million uh, in securities. Like why? Because in the back of your head, you got to know that everything is covered and you got to be very specific. You can't get off of a Zoom. None of us can get off of a Zoom and go, well, that was entertaining. We got to get off of Zoom and go, there's a $2,800 a month gap. And I right. have a specific plan of how to make up the gap, right? So I'm just hushing up so that you guys can catch up with this if you need to, but you're going to go through and you're going to put the short-term goals and get this total dollar amount. And you're going to get the annual of these things. And you're going to get a specific dollar amount and you're going to add up those two dollar amounts. And then go down here because no matter where anybody is, are you just done? Or do you intend on growing in 2024? Because if you intend on growing in 2024, which we're getting ready to go into um, in this training, but if you intend growing into 2024, then we're going to get really specific. How often are you going to pay yourself? From Primerica. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you have an additional job, right? <clears throat> so let's say that that <clears throat> you're going to pay yourself every week. <clears throat> you got to put right here what the cash amount is that you started this off with, 
What's the cash withdrawal that you're going to pull out of that business account and use between you and your spouse? And when it's done, it's done. And then how much is automated going into those short-term goals and those non-monthly expenses? And get crystal clear on how much money is your business paying you right now? And how much are you automating to automatically go into these things? And what's the difference? And now you got very specific. Is anybody lost on this or is everybody solid on this? Aaron, does this automatically populate into this section on weekly or from the other page? Or um, So, uh, uh, no, you're going to. So then what you're going to do, step four, is select appropriate worksheets based on how often wow. you want it and then begin entering. <clears throat> So if you're going to do weekly, right, you're just going to, what, what Mike and I did is we pulled up our F and A, right. And we said, and I'm going to show you guys, we went to trend track and we said, okay, here's a baseline. We'll never go below this baseline. That's and good. we pull up our budget sheet and we go, okay, so this is how much this is how much is automatically going into investments. This is how much is automatically going into those short-term thing, you know, the short-term goal accounts, right? Here's how much is going towards, you know, tithing and taxes. Like here's how much is there. Cause we're all running a business, right? People get smoked in business because nobody sits down and says, get specific about your business plan, right? <clears throat> so don't think if we're going into 2024, that it's just going to figure itself out because it's not. It's kind of like going, I'm a really good person. Oh my gosh, I met with mean people. I think this isn't for me. Like, that's not true. We have to be responsible with the blessings that we have. So then you're just going to go in here and each week, you know the exact dollar amount. You know the exact dollar amount. You know the exact dollar amount. Now we're getting very specific about the goals. Mm. <clears throat> but Mike and I had our budget sheet. <clears throat> And we took these things and we just put them in our budget sheet from our FNA. How many people on here have a driving force of certainty or have a driving force of freedom? If you have a driving force of freedom, you're like, oh, heck yeah. I know my vacations are paid for 12 times over throughout the year. I know the things that I want are paid for 12 times over, 100 times over every year, right? If your spouse or, or your significant other is certainty driven, guess how they feel about this? Oh my goodness, it's paid for 52 times over. This is mm. so awesome. Like that, you'll really enjoy it and you got to get them involved, right? Hey, a uh, question for you. Yes. What do you mean by not monthly expenses? So the non-monthly expenses, it's a great question. I love that you asked it. So the non-monthly, it's right here. Oh, step number three, one. these things. Yep. And Okay. So like tags for your car, taxes that come up, you're getting tires for your spouse, things like that. And Add uh, the things up. Go ahead. When you go, when you go back to, to the weekly, please. Yes, so uh, each of those things are a week, a week worth of, of this. Yes. Okay. Yep. And if somebody is like, okay, I see. Okay, I see. Okay. I'm Aaron, What's the next? Aaron? Oh, yeah. Aaron, I just, quick, I just quickly say that it doesn't have to be perfect and it gets better if you keep it up longer. Yes. Meaning the things that you will put in this category, you might change to a different category next month or two months from now or something. And just don't worry about it being perfect, but start tracking it is 90% of it. Go ahead, Wayne. I guess I think I figured it out. So this is four weeks, right? Is that right, Aaron? So it goes from left to right? Yes, because if somebody gets paid, yes, you're absolutely, yep, one, two, three, four. And then because if somebody is actually setting themselves up to get paid weekly, there's those additional paychecks. There's those additional or those months where it's like, oh, this is a longer month. But right. we don't see it when we don't plan ahead for it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to spend the money a year in advance. And then making money makes sense to everybody on here. Yep. And so just however anybody gets paid, you can shift to whatever that is down below. But I think it's so significant because let's say that you go, okay, so our cash withdrawal, I'm just using a simple example is, 
a hundred bucks a week. I'm just whatever anybody wants to say. That's, you know, it's relative, right? So a hundred bucks a week. And then, and then you go, okay, now my short-term savings goal, my non-monthly expenses, that's 2,800 bucks a month. Well, now we have a really specific goal for your Primerica business, right? Like it actually, like, what are you standing for? What are you doing? You're very specific. You don't back down when you have adversity or distractions. You know, I, I said a nice little jingle is if you never, if you never pay the price, you're always going to count the cost. These things are costly. They're costly when they pop up in your life, right? They're Today would be a really nice day for me to just chill out all day long, but then also tomorrow, just as coach Jim said, but then also the next day after that, well, I'm not feeling it today either. And so when you never pay the price, you're always counting the cost and the cost is huge. So just a spending plan. Does anybody need anything else on the spending plan? Cause I'm going to jump to trend track of the business plan for for ending 2023 strong going into 2024. Good. Can I switch gears? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, y'all. So let's fly Did through this. Did Ethan put this together? What? Did your brother Ethan put this no. together? No, no. Okay. Um. <laughs> But okay, yeah, we're back to the people, right? No, it was off. Uh, it was off an LFIC thing. Um, it's like my my eyes, like right when I say I'm looking for sure. this, like I just find it all the time. It's very weird. I don't know, but I'm excited. <laughs> it, it's all it's all over Telegram. Yep, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing, right? We're going to we're going to end with this 2024 business plan. Um, but there's a couple things that I think are really, really important is we're going to use trend track to make this stuff make sense. So who here has ever used trend track before? The reason trend track is really important yes. for everybody on here. I just need you to shelf what we started doing because you're like the action step leaving training today is like, do your spending plan, do it. Don't put it off because it's just chaos when you have to react, right? It costs way too much. So now what we're going to do is I think it's really powerful for everybody on here to get on POL. So all I'm on is primericaonline.com. I went to my POL, all apps for business, go to your trend track. When you go to your trend track, gosh darn it. When you go to your trend track, cool, we're going to sign back in here. When you go to your trend track, you can make a personal base shop. I don't care, whatever in the world you want it to be. And then do your rolling 12, but pick like, what's the year that stands out in your mind that was your best year ever? Like you grew in Primerica. Because in 2024, you don't want to beat just whatever year. Don't you want to beat your best? Like, if coach, you know, if, if Telus went in and he was like, you know, one year I was the most fit I've ever been in my entire life. My energy was unbelievable. My family life was unbelievable. All the things. And then I had a year that was like kind of blah, like 2024, you don't, you don't want to beat your blah year. You want to beat your best year, right? It's got to mean something. And so when you go into trend track, personal 12 months or base shop, whatever you want to do, and then pick your best year, you're going to cl click select all. And then there's different people on here that have different like investment goals. Okay. So just pick whatever that is and then click view. Hey, Aaron. Are you sharing yeah. your screen? Are you sharing you your screen? Not... Yeah, because we mm -hmm. can't see. Oh, sorry, guys. Yep. Sure am. <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> so I'm on Primerica Online. I go to my POL, all apps for business. I click trend track, which is right here. Personal or base shop. Do your rolling 12 of whatever your best year in Primerica was. Select all and then pick if your security is licensed. View and get real goals down. Like beat your best. 
Any questions on that so I can keep rolling? So keep rolling. Keep rolling. Okay. I'm I'm trying to just kind of get the pace from everybody here. Okay. So let me give you guys, I think this is really cool. So this is a sod farages, right? And I love the categories. So you guys are going to recreate the same categories and add whatever additional categories that you want to track. But you got to see where you are. And then you have to have goals that matter. That's why we started with the spending plan is because you got to know exactly why those dollar amounts matter. And then we're going to go do something about it, right? So this was Asad Faraj's 2022, 2023, and then his 2024 goals. Now, it's kind of hilarious because some people on here might be like, good grief, that's huge. I just want you to see this is a vision, right? I think this is very important to have in front of us because it's incredible to see what stretch goals look like. It's incredible to see what growth goals look like. It's incredible to just have this perspective, isn't it? So when you're looking at your trend track, you'll see the number of cases that you that you and your team submitted in your best year, right? Life cases, how much life premium. I would challenge everybody to pick the grow by no less than number. For Mike and I, it was grow no less than 60%. So whatever our numbers were, grow no less than 60%. We got to be over 60% in these goals. Okay. So here's how we categorized it. I'll show you guys here in just a moment, but you're going to have your life premium and your life cases. You're going to have your number of recruits. Are you going to become an RVP? Are you going to promote regional vice presidents, right? The PLPP plans, how many of those beat your best? Your securities volume beat your best. That's why I said like, I, I don't like the idea of, of 50%. I personally, my personal philosophy is I want to go more than that, right? Um, securities packs and team cash flow. Man, isn't that cool to have a payroll like that for your team? That's important. Then what Mike and I added was new licenses. And then we added how many appointments have to be set per day to guarantee that we're achieving these goals up above. Mm. Can I move on? So this is going to go to step, step number one, when I said we have to have a very clearly defined mission. But guys, here's the thing. Mission, people don't care. People do not care. Um, so we talked about this last time. People do not care about term insurance. People do not care about the legal protection plan. People do not care about the FNA. Those words don't mean anything to them. What they do is they go, when I'm near Wayne Olson, Wayne and Dean Olson, these are salt of the earth, wonderful humans. I trust them. They are consistent. So trustworthy. They are consistent. They are graceful humans, right? They are generous you see what I'm saying? They have clearly defined core values, which is their personal brand. And they're not doing it because they're trying to brand a business. It's because of the human beings that they are. What everybody here, what all of us, what I challenge every one of us in this hierarchy to do this year is it is not about a business. It is not about those things. It is about getting very crystal clear on your core values. And that is your personal brand. How do people feel when they read your posts? How do people feel when they get a card from you? How do people feel when your name gets brought up, period? Do they associate you with drama and cattiness? Or do they associate you with, with faith and grace? Do they associate you with consistency and trustworthiness? Do they associate your brand and your personal brand is what's going to help them make in their mind and in their heart and in their spirit a connection to the company or the business that most of your friends and family and in in your audience or your clients, they don't really know that much about. So perfect example, just to help, Mike Morris is amazing at who he is as a human being. He is always consistent. Somebody posted something on Facebook a couple days ago. Mike's not looking for an applause. Mike just stands for something. He knows exactly what he stands for. And he knows exactly what the enemy is. 
and he knows exactly what he's here to do, right? So he's not trying to prove anything to anybody. He's just a good person. Somebody posted on a local company or a local business, like, oh my gosh, the prices are increasing. These people are blah, 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 blah. And Mike got on there and just kindly said like, well, you're not wrong for how you feel. And I will say that their prices, that they're an incredible family. During COVID, when everything shut down, they allowed us to take gym stuff home with us to take, you know what I'm saying? Like he stood up for the family. He was very polite and respectful. He stood for what he stood for. And he said, I would, I would, I would pay double that, like just incredible people. Right. So when I read something Mike posts, I go, that's a good human. That's a respectful human. That's a trustworthy human. And so I challenge everybody here. What are people saying? How do they feel about you? What's the track record that you are going to create from this moment forward? When your name comes out of people's mouths, what is your track record? The seven core values for 2024. See, he didn't say be a perfect person. He said be perfect in effort and attitude, right? These are the things that he stands for. And these are the things Asad Faraj is going to fight against, right? He's not going to, he can't say, um, I, I sometimes tolerate meeting attendance. Now, my mm. core value is I work with committed, consistent people. I'm a committed, consistent person. I grow, right, through meeting attendance. So it doesn't matter when we leave this meeting if people are showing up or they're not, what are you clearly standing for? And what are you clearly not standing for? Grow through massive activity, grow through the next, right? License, promotion, grow through focus on partnership, growth personally in faith, family, and fitness. Is this making sense, guys? Get your core values. This is your personal brand. It's that important. So when you're posting things, when we're posting things, when we're doing anything, just stop and ask yourself, how is this coming across? Is this an alignment and consistent with my, my personal philosophy about life? A successful year breaks down to four successful weeks, right? Which is working successful days and having a successful day today. So today is going to stack on tomorrow and all of it matters. All of it matters. A productive hour today right now is, did you do your spending plan or did you blow it off? Mm. And I'm talking to me, right? Like, did you do it or did you make it look like you did it? Right. And it's like, check yourself in that because that's part of your personal brand. Mike's whole thing is like discipline in all things, discipline in all in all things, because whether you're on a peak or a valley, that discipline is that important because when you lose it, it starts to erode every other part of your life. Right. Rather than wishing and hoping for a new year, we're going to commit to the following actions that will result in a successful and productive new year. So I will commit to self-improvement by, and I love, 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 love this because everybody gets an index card, right? And just as Asad Faraj said on, on his LFIC training, the goal is your index card is so worn down that it's almost see-through by the end of 2025 or 2024, I'm sorry. So see, he's going to read it every single day. I'll commit to self-improvement by going to, what's your thing? I will commit to self-improvement by, right? I accept a new associate is not locked in until they have a new associate. So he has, I think this is amazing to read these things. I commit to brainstorming, getting five names and contact numbers for every new associate at every interview, every guest immediately following the business overview and every financial needs analysis, which I will call within 48 hours. So let's say mark today is the day that you read this, you left training, you said, man, I'm still trying to find the secret. Man, I'd really like to grow. Yeah, I saw that thing one time, but I can't find it in all the piles of stuff. That's reacting, right? And we're done with reacting. <laughs> 
I commit to, so he is speaking it into existence. He is, he, he is being very, very clear with exactly what he's going to do. I will personally commit to attend and be focused on growing my team attendance at the weekly. What is your training? So have you guys ever been like, oh crap, totally forgot about training. Whoops. Whoop, totally forgot about the money in business. I'm just reacting all year. I'm just reacting because I had 50 other things that got my attention before today. Well, not if every single day you say it to yourself, not if every single day you make the vision. This is making the vision clear and plain right in front of your face every single day. By Wednesday of each week, I will begin working on this, this, this. I realize that if I do not begin each week productive, I will not end the month productively. Is this good for anybody? This oh. is specific, right? Yes, this is great. I will begin yeah. each F&A presentation by saying whatever method you use. Erica, I have two jobs. The first is providing solutions for your personal finances. And the second is to look for people part or full time to help us with our expansion process in case you or someone you know may be interested. How many people here struggle with what are you doing to get this thing started? Why are you doing it? Right? Well, there you go. Every single time he's just, he is laying the tracks and this stuff is the boring work and it is the work. By doing this, I'm committed to putting a recruiting first focus back in my business. I will get licensed in and master all product lines. What'd you say, Erica? Sorry, I just want to make sure this is all, these everything is written on the, the card. Well, he's got a vision card, right? So he's got a vision card. And I think what's really powerful is, so your index card, yeah, but you guys will make it your own. And if you want to borrow these things, because it helps you, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is totally in alignment with what I stand for, what I'm doing, what I'm wanting to implement, things like that. Like, yes, you're going to put that on your index card. I'll get licensed in and master all product lines, right? If this is what you want to do, I will get referrals. I think this is so powerful. Because this is a multimillionaire literally going, here you go. I'm being very specific with what I do. I will get referrals on each appointment that include the following. Five couples that they would trust to raise their children with if they were to pass away. Y'all imagine if every day you read that, every day you read that, every day you read that, every day you read that. Then when you go on an appointment and you go, I've done, I've read this so many times. I've done this so many times. It is literally a talk track. Hey, Aaron. Right. Yeah. Could you go back to, to three and four, please. I'm so sorry. Absolutely. I'm to take a screenshot. Sorry. And I promise I'm going to drop this. I'm going to drop this for everybody. Before we get off, I will pause Thank for you. five seconds and I will drop this whole thing in the chat too. Thank you for reminding me. I don't believe that any of us, and for anybody here that says, I'm a dull, disillusioned, dadgum crybaby, I'm not good enough, I don't have what it takes, I can't lead a team, I can't grow a team, I promise that none of that is true. It's you got too many apps going on in your head, too many systems open in the computer, so to speak, right, in our mind. And we're just reacting, 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 right? This is to eliminate that entirely, right? And it's not, it just as Coach Jim said, you got to give yourself 30, 60, 90 days, another 30, 60, 90 days, but you got to be doing the work 30, 60, 90 days, right? So I'll begin each FNA. There we go. Um, I'll get referrals, five couples that they would trust to raise their children with if they were to pass away, the name of their tax preparer, the contact person at their work who would be the one to make decisions on a retirement plan. Look up the free Arissa, right? The contact number of the most ambitious person that they know. They steam on every appointment, on every appointment. So, you know, when we go to big events or when we win things or we're like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get in that training because I got to figure out what their, what is their secret? It's just right here. And by the way, this is no surprise to anybody, is it? These are things that if you were to calculate and add up every single training that we go to and every single thing we say, sometimes it'll take 10, it'll take people 10 years ago. Oh my gosh, this business is just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Uh-huh. Yep. Write it down on the index card. We do the thing. 
I will spend all working minutes either in front of prospects or prospecting. I will not spend, as a multimillionaire, I will not spend all of my minutes hidden behind a computer, not talking to humans. That's, see, notice like sometimes it's what they don't say, right? I will spend all working minutes either in front of prospects or prospecting. This includes contacting motivated people. Who are you looking for? Motivated people, right? Referrals, accountants, loan officers. There you go. Like there's your five to stay alive. Working minutes, right? I'll maintain a schedule that includes God time, family time, exercise time, specific hours for Primerica that includes a reward system. When I'm full time, I will rise and get to the office at the same time each day. I think this is awesome. Attracting one new associate per week, part time or full time, right? Aaron, could you go back one slide? I just need to screenshot it. This there one, babe? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep. He has the cow situation going. Attitude plus activity equals successful results. And sometimes, guys, like our attitude, we just start taking on the attitude of the people around us. Therefore, I believe and I'm enthusiastic about the fact that if I commit to the above 10 steps, I will make this, 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 fill in your number. So you guys saw what his goals were. And I think that's amazing. That's incredible because each of us are at a different place in our business and so I absolutely love like how many RVPs were they going to have? 200 RVPs, right? So the index card instructions, take a screenshot. Again, I'm going to drop this in the chat, but the front and the back with your goals. Keep on or near you at all times. Look at it every day, every day, every day, every day. Like, can we do that part? Can all of us say, for Pete's sakes, if I don't keep this index card on me, and if I don't keep it on body at all times, and if I don't master this and make a copy of it and put it on my visor and put it on my bathroom mirror and keep one on my body at all times, I am subjecting myself and my family to reacting in 2024. And if you're not mm. exhausted by what happened in 2023, right? Like you got, okay, you know what? And I think this is powerful too, as coaches and leaders, like to be to be students of this, to be practicing this, to be doing what we ask other people to do because people will look at our lives and go, oh my gosh, how did, how did you do it? Well, I prayed first off. I prayed before I slayed and now we're slaying this index card situation, right? And so our dream life, you gotta have what is your dream life? So we've got one index card where we have those, those 10 steps or those affirmations, right? Front and back, right? Small. Then you've got your, and I would just keep these, keep them together, like however you're going to keep them together. But this is the only other index card that you're going to have, right? You're going to put your dream life on the left column. So on the front of your index card, you're going to draw two lines from top to bottom and you're going to have your dream life. This is what I stand for. So have the person quit on you. Have the person say something nasty. Have the person no call, no show. Decide that you're not going to prospect people today. Decide that you're not going to do your jar win. Decide that you're not going to do it. And then look at these things and then tell me, right? Tell yourself, right? So what are you standing up for and what are you not tolerating? Are you retiring your spouse? Are you putting your kids in a, in a Christian school, a private school? Are you buying your parents a house? Are you helping your family members in need? Are you traveling the world? Are you donating, Right. You're going to have your dream life on that column, the left column. The next column is your goals. Your goals, this is what I absolutely stand for. Yeah. And then on the and then you're going to have your prospecting plan. So if you think about it, what was so costly in 2023 not having a plan? Hey, Aaron, can you go back to the goals real quick? Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you guys for asking and, and talking and coming. Like, I love that. Um, okay, babe, there's somebody in the waiting room. So the prospecting plan, think of how much it costs people to not have a prospecting plan. Mm -hmm. So when we stop and we ask ourselves the question, when I show you guys a business plan for 2024, it's going to say, who's going to help me? Here's your who's going to help me. Here's some of or a suggested list of who's going to help you. 
Hey, Aaron, sorry to do this to you, but can go you ahead. go back one more time? Let's do it. Anything you guys need. And if anybody's asking in the chat and I'm not acknowledging you, I promise it's not because I'm trying to be rude. Thank you, ma'am. Squirrel. <laughs> Absolutely. So prospecting plan. Who's going to help me? I love this plan. Do you guys love this plan? Because I like getting off of a Zoom going, who's helping me? I like to ask that question. Who am I going to possibilitize with right now? Referrals. Boom. Now I'm locked in on it. And now I can take the action. See, so guys, think about this. You've done this stuff before. Like how many parents on here, you like read the book, what to expect when you're expecting. You like asked everybody all the things and all the stuff. And it's like, you got three hours of sleep, but you still went to your job. Right. And you still raised your, you still raised a healthy baby. And then you had another one and then you built a house and like you did things that you had never done before. And there were changes in people and all the things happening and like you still did it. So you, you did it before all of us have done it before. What's the difference? You had a plan to go attack and here you, I don't know. I don't have a plan. We're going to make sure that there's a plan. So field training recruits, fantastic prospecting plan, referrals, networking groups, social media, local businesses, create relationships through your core values. What do people think of? What do they feel when your name gets uttered, right? When your name comes out of people, when they see anything about you, what do they feel? It's your personal management philosophy. So now you're going to flip the card over. The same card that you just had those three columns, you're going to flip the card over. And this is what his challenge was. He said, I challenge you, right? And think about this, like, tell us when you're working from your, you know exactly what your mission is. You know exactly what you're there to prove to yourself, to your family, to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know exactly what you're there to prove and you know who or what is the enemy. When you know your personal values so well, tell me anybody on here has a recruiting problem. You won't have a recruiting problem because you clearly know who you're looking for and you clearly know who you're not looking for. You know the more you want to have in your life and you know the whole lot less you want to have in your life. I would be looking for a tell us. I go, tell us this is exactly who I'm looking for. This is exactly what their attitude is like. This is exactly what they stand up for. This is exactly what they won't tolerate. Is that you? Who do you know like that, right? But it's only when we're not that specific that you get led into the lion's den, right? You blindly drift into the lion's den and you go, Oof. oh my gosh. No, when you're very specific, you know exactly what you're going to do. So the goal is the challenge is 52 directs. And the only way, this is what he said, you can write all of their names in, right? And your goal is every week to get a new direct. And he said, but only write their names in or highlight their names, do something to distinctly like really challenge it when they're a couple, when you got two of them coming in together, just write them down and start exploding your business. This is awesome because every week, this is what we should literally track Every Saturday when we're hopping on here, boom, who moved, who moved, who moved, who moved, who moved, who didn't react in 2024. Hmm. So we already talked about trend track, right? We already talked about trend track. So I'm just sharing this with you guys. Some people might go, this is really goofy. This is how Mike and I did this, right? Mike and I said, okay, so we've got our 2024 goals. And when we had our goals, all we did is we went to trend track. And we looked at these categories and then we broke it down into, so if that's what our goal is for 2024, then we're going to divide that out monthly. And then we're going to divide that out weekly. We're going to divide the life cases out monthly. We're going to divide it out weekly. We're going to take our recruits. We're going to divide that out monthly. We're going to divide it out weekly. And then we had Assad Farages over here because, you know, always keep that right in front of your face, right? Guys, this is so powerful. It was cool to go in here and go, okay, so you know what? His team cash flow, like you might be laughing really hard. Like his team cash flow is 30 million. Ours is 200,000. I do not feel bad when I am working with, I have four, four people wearing the watch this year. I have 
one person making 200,000, we have two people making a hundred thousand, like th that is well in my heart, right? It is something that I go, I, I can believe in that. I can do that. Right. And, and I'm not just going to lean on my own understanding, right? I need to pray every day or in, I need to renew my vision. I need to renew my mind. I need to go there first and then like read these every single day. Right. And so then sets as a team daily, we know that we need to add to the calendar every day, 13 new appointments. So Aaron, quick question. Yes. 13 new appointments per person or per team? Per team. Great okay, question. Thank you. I love that you asked that question. So check the size of your team and you go, hey, okay, so each one of us, each one of us, each one of us, and I'm going to close out with that part. I love that okay. you asked that question. Does anybody have any other questions about any of this? So before I end on the last I, I kind of have a somewhat of a question. I said this one, we kind of went over this on, on one of our trainings earlier on Wednesday. And and uh, one of the things that I noticed is it's kind of like uh, Asaf Faraj does his vision board, or, I mean, this is kind of like his version of his vision board. Right. And uh, I brought it up to our team that I, like, I've, I used to think vision boards were goofy. You know, I had that mentality a long time ago and then, you know, but every single successful person I've ever met has had a vision board every there's not a single one so i was just going to say like i know we have a couple uh i know we have a few really successful people on here um but like from some from like a from like a wayne or a gym like have you guys done those types of things like those vision boards and can you guys talk about that for just a second because i mean that stuff kind of geeks me out <laughs> yeah i mean um if you don't have your um you know can't inspect what you don't inspect does that make sense you gotta have it in front of you um Everybody has their different why, but when we got serious, you know, as weird and corny as it sounds, you have to break it down like this. I know it's, I feel like we're all accountants on this morning trying to figure out numbers here, but I think the idea is that you got to visualize it too there, Mike. So you got to have it in front of you. So you have, so when, like what Aaron said, when we first start off, not to repeat, but you know, you are going to be faced with animosity you're going to end up with people in front of you and if you don't have something you can go back and do a checkup from the neck up every day call it a vision goal whatever uh then you'll forget you'll forget what you did on december 20th or december 26th or whatever when you set these because these got to be done before the new year i'm gonna tell you right now it has to be done before the first yeah and um and you got to have that. That's what Aaron was saying. You got to look at it all the time, Mike. Uh, so yes, absolutely. I, I don't know if Jim here uh, can speak on this behalf, but I just, I think it's absolute. I don't know of anybody successful in the business that I've met personally that didn't have a vision board. So. That's right. That's right. Thank you for that. Yeah. One of the things that, that lends to not reacting is if we have a spend plan for our money and we have a spend plan for our business, right? Like we just did. We have an action plan in advance. Then really truthfully, guys, like I believe CRM and as coach, as, as coach Wayne has shared, um, I absolutely love and respect so much about how that Nebraska team like runs their business right? It's a professional business. And so one of the things that I encourage everybody to do is today when you're doing your spending plan with your spouse, and now you have your very crystal clear index card, right? Because everybody can go, okay, and recap, what are we doing? Spending plan number one is done. Two, my index card is done. Three, I need to have my system in place because when we looked at starting this presentation, when we looked at, oops, I'm sorry. When we looked at starting this whole thing off and I showed everybody this first part and it's like, oh, well, that's really attractive. Of course, everybody is very attracted to, wow, we picked up this much money and we did this much good and we did all of these things. We did all of these things. Well, where did all of these things come from? They first right? They first had to come from exactly right here. Like people, people want us to give them a call. People want us to give them a call. So we have to go to our CRM 
And for anybody on here that's looking at your CRM for the very first time, you're going to go right up here to go now, make sure you're in the new CRM. And one of the, whoops, it's got me logged out here. Um, sorry, y'all. I got to get this out of the way. And you go to your CRM, it's just allowing everybody to hop in here and you go to your new CRM. This has got to be like, it is so important to get your system down where first off, like put your contacts in. And when you're talking to professionals, professionals love the fact that you have a client relationship manager. So I get on my phone and I put my contacts in. And so I uploaded an additional 1,100 contacts from my mobile device, right? So I put my contacts in. I can use the pre-existing lists that are on here, right? Just different people that you can put on here, okay? But the things I think that are really, really, really significant about this is put your contacts in. So just write down CRM, upload all my contacts. Number two, get my campaigns turned on. <laughs> like care about putting my, my, my campaigns in here. I love the investments and savings because when people are like, oh, I called these clients and I did these bright house and I did these things and I did this stuff. Well, they didn't just run into the day. They had their contacts. They knew their existing life clients. They knew their existing reps. They knew their investment clients and everybody on here, you got to start with, do you have your contacts uploaded first? Do you have your custom list put together? Do you have your campaigns turned on? This is not hard. It's so easy. And uh, and for anybody that's really big in investments, has anybody, do you guys use often going to the investments and savings yet? Because it's beautiful. Yes. It's, it's a oh, game changer. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Yes. You get oh, on there and you see all of the assets under management, like by day, it just like grows astronomically. And you're like, it's so great. And then you call the people and you're like, I have great news. Can we get together for like 20 minutes today? I just have great, great, great news. Those are the kinds of CRM calls that we have. And so I think a belief that sometimes people have is like, I don't even know how I start this conversation. Just start the conversation, right? We go right back to exactly how we started this. We go right back to this right here. This is exactly how you start the conversation, right? But he had a specific goal and his specific goal was, I'm going to set 20 B dollar smarts. And I think by the end of the night, there was like 17 of them or something, literally 17 done in a day. It's just, yeah. Right. yeah. So I, I don't know if we, we are done or not, but I just, I'm like, I, I just yeah. feel inspired to share one thing with everyone, if if that's possible. Please go. Nobody has to ask. So could you uh, stop sharing? I just want to yep. show something that has, uh, I think, Wynn and myself, we were, I think Wynn knew about this, but but I had never heard of it before. Uh, our meeting. Can I stop your sharing? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was sharing. I'm sorry. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, so Jim, I saw this the first time the weekend at uh, Don Elephant, and I know it's almost ten thirty, so I'm gonna be quick. So, this is this is your your Primerica app. Uh, you go to Primerica now. When when is exactly where I'm going? This the, this literally changed the, the game for us. Don't look at my numbers. You 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 go to to report on the right side. Mm -hmm. You go to uh, special reports again. You go to your Primerica app. You know. Again, Primerica now, and then a report, spe special reports. You click on special reports. And then we all have this life and investment one. I'm telling you right now, this was the, the holy grail for us to plan for next year. Because you see, I don't have anything to hide. Y'all can see all my information anywhere. So this is broken down and don't, don't, don't panic. This is a game changer. If you're not plan for Nessie on top of what everything Aaron just did, go in here. You can see exactly what you make selling what, what is your trailer income, so you can set goals for trailer income. And you know, in my opinion, at, at the end of the day, man, if you gotta work for that money every month, man, you know, 
it's painful in my opinion you got to create some passive income and for us it's uh it's taking all that you you taught us Aaron and then really tracking our business because this is a business back at you that's so right guys we are totally done I just want feedback from anybody like questions feedback let's just make this let's finish this and make this unbelievable just one more comment too thanks to for sharing that I I just think that there comes a time or a season in your business guys as technical as this was this morning and laying out your vision and laying out your goals, which are imperative. You got to have that. That's what Mike asked me a few minutes ago, but you got to not mistake. And you got to, you got to know what work is. One of my biggest challenges I've seen throughout my years of doing this is we, uh, we didn't have primary online POA. Lost in that for about seven months, if you'd like, and then you'd start your business. And what I found is people mistaken work for work because we come from a processing world. When you have a nine to five job, we're taught to go to work and process. We move the paper from the left side of the desk to the right side of the desk and they pay you, I you don't know, 25 bucks an hour for doing that. What I'm getting at is you come over to this world called Primerica and you're exposed to all this data, even this morning with all this input. And what happens at the end of the day, you feel like, I worked. No, you didn't. You didn't right. even start the dog on car. You 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 polished it, right? Tell us you're out there checking it out, you know, doing all your things, checking out all the bells and whistles, but you never got in the freaking car and drove it, you know? So, and I remember, and I'll end on this, is that I had goose, I mean, I literally was just, dude, I'm a chicken shit. I'll tell you, I, I remember staring at my list. I had no we didn't have POL, so I didn't have a lot more to talk about except what was drilled on training. So then I had my goals, and I was sitting down, I was looking at it. It was Sunday night, and I go, it's time to start the engine. And I mean, I start thinking about it, I go, screw it, I'm doing it next Sunday. And then I'd start over again, tell us. And most of you guys maybe heard this story, but I was eight months in the business, made nothing, zero. And all of a sudden, one day I come home from one of these training sessions. It wasn't on on uh you know zoom but i came home and i go i got the secret i got the secret and my wife goes what is it god i hope so because we've been freaking broke for eight months you got to make appointments now see craig's looking at me going what a freaking moron you got to be kidding me i my wife you know i'm not even going to those trainings and i know you need to make appointments what the hell are you learning over there see i was I was afraid. And I think once you make that decision, guys, that's all we're asking as senior leaders. And I hope I'm speaking for all the ones here on the on Zoom this morning. It's just, you know, let's go change the world. You're going to get better at applying yourself. There, you won't learn all this stuff unless you get in the freaking car and figure out how it feels. I mean, it's all reflex, isn't it, for everybody who drives a car right now? You don't sit there and think about, okay, what is... Uh, you know, you know, you just get in the car and drive, right? It's natural. It's called reflex. That's what's going to happen in Prime America. Once you start the car, you won't even have to think about it. You'll just keep working the plan. So I don't know. That was on my mind. So I wanted to let everybody know. So thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Right. Guys, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God yeah, bless Christmas. everybody on here. Thank you so much for for standing for what you stand for. Um, we'll we'll continue to do just get better and better and better every day. But guys, use what we did today. I hope you'll take that time for yourself. I hope I hope that you'll reflect internally um, and and use this. And we'll get the recording out. Um, but Merry Christmas. God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, for everything you do. Incredible Thank coach. You. Awesome. Love you all, Aaron. Incredible training. Aaron? Yeah. Thank yes. You. Somebody was saying my name. I thought. Are you going to drop? Are you going to drop uh, the presentation in the chat? Yeah, drop it, this is Tracy. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah, so, I thought um, it was the I other key, and I'm like, thirty. Yeah. Um, there's that PDF, that version. Give me one sec. I'll do it again. You Thank can. you so much for reminding I me. I don't even think I'm not leaving the house until I shower I, and, and and shit. This face is killing. <laughs> me. I see it, Aaron. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I'm with you guys. It's getting so specific. It matters. Okay. All right, guys, Thank it you, should Aaron. be in the chat. I'll make sure. Um, I see it. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, wonderful. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. It's yep, it's in there. All right.
Hold on.